Okay, our final lesson for this module is called Calculating Inflation. And in our last unit, we learned, actually throughout the course of this module, we've been learning about the introduction to macroeconomics. And what we've learned is that in macroeconomics, essentially, our goal is to constantly be fighting the two big evils, the two big heads of the macro monster, right? Inflation and unemployment. In our last lesson, we learned what inflation was. We learned that it was a general rise in prices. We also learned why economists worry about it so much, uh, how it negatively impacts so many people, uh, and why it's such a concern. So that's essentially was the beginning of, of, of a two-part lesson. This lesson is the second part. And, and once we've learned what inflation was and why it's a concern, we have to begin to do some of the math of it, some of the actual calculation as to how do we actually calculate inflation. And that's what we're going to begin at this point. So here we go. OK. The first thing we're going to be doing is learning how to measure inflation. And to do that, we're going to start with a term called a basket. All right, so we'll start with the definition. Um, in economics, a basket is a group of goods and services that make up a cross-section of the economy in a given year. Now, in most economies, most very large economies, it's very difficult for someone who's trying to measure inflation inflation to measure the price of every single good in the economy. Um, the United States economy is almost, for example, $15 trillion. It'd be pretty hard to measure every single thing that occurred uh, in terms of price changes in, in the country. So what we do is we take a sample, or a basket, we call it, of goods that seem like a pretty good representation of what our economy actually consumes in a given year. So that's what a basket is. It's sort of a sample of the economy. Okay, How do we calculate the value of a basket? Well, let's use this data down here in the corner. Um, we're going to make a, an imaginary country again, Macroecondia, for the year 2010. And you'll notice that Macroecondia has three items, uh, Oreo cookies, economics books, and dry erase markers. Just a random three things. Um, they happen to be three of my favorite things, which is why they're, they were chosen for this example. So we notice that we have some data here. Um, we have the price of each good, and we have how many goods, uh, how many of those goods were sold. So, for example, Oreos uh, were sold for a dollar, the quantity was a hundred. Economics books were sold for ten dollars, the quantity five, and dry erase markers three dollars, the quantity was twenty-five. All right. So the first thing we're going to do to calculate the value of a basket is to multiply or figure out how much we spent on each good. Well, how do we do that? We multiply the price times the quantity. And that makes sense, right? If I want to know how much was spent on the good, how many did I sell, and how much did each one sell for? So if I do that, I multiply price times quantity, I'll get the total spending on that good. Then we want to add up the total for each of those goods. So let's do that. For Oreos, it's $100, 1 times 100. For economics books, it's $50, 10 times 5. And for dry erase markers, it's $75, 3 times 25. And now again, to find the total value of our basket, we simply add those three values together. And so 100 plus 50 plus 75 equals $225. Pretty straightforward. And now we know the value of a basket for Macrocondia for 2010. Pretty straightforward, not, not too hard to do. OK, why don't you give this one a shot? Please try to find the value of the basket uh, of goods if these three items, water, milk, and juice, were the only items produced by this country. I'm going to stop, please stop the video and then restart it when you're done. Okay, so like in our last example, we have three different items, water, milk, and juice, and each has a price, a quantity, and with that information, we should be able to fill, figure out the basket value for this country. Okay, so let's see, how do we do this? Water. Well, the price is, is a dollar times the quantity four gives us a value of four dollars. Milk was two dollars times ten, which was twenty dollars. And juice is three dollars times five, which is fifteen. And so the total value of the basket, hopefully you found out, was thirty-nine dollars. Pretty straightforward. That's how we calculate the value of a basket. That's the first calculation we're going to need. OK, now why do we need to know the value of a basket? Well, let's keep moving on here. The reason we do is because we need to calculate something called the Consumer Price Index. 
um, better known to most people out there as the CPI. You often hear this out there, the Consumer Price Index. Well, first of all, what is the Consumer Price Index exactly? Well, what it is, is it's a 100-point system that's used to measure inflation. Uh, an index is a scale, and indexes are used to measure things. Um, so, for example, uh, tornadoes have an index. They're usually measured 1 to 5. Hurricanes have an index. They're usually measured 1 to 5. Well, inflation has an index also. It's called the CPI, and it's a 100-point system that measures inflation. So the first thing we should know is how do we calculate the CPI? Well, here's how we do it. The CPI is equal to the price of baskets, of the basket, excuse me, in the target year divided by the price of a basket in the base year times 100. Okay, so far, okay. The price of a basket in the target year divided by the price of a basket in the base year times 100. Okay, well, we just figured out how to figure out the value of a basket. So we would take that value for what's called the target year and that value for what's called the base year and then multiply that value times 100. So obviously we want to know what the target year is and what the base year is. Well, to explain that, here's the deal. The base year is the year you will adjust prices to match, where the target year is the year you want to compare to the base year. So, for example, if I said something like, uh, a candy bar cost a quarter in 1970. How much would that same quarter cost in 2000, excuse me, that same candy bar cost in 2013? <clears throat> the way we think of this is the year we want to compare to the base year, the target year, that would be 1970. We want to know basically in today's dollars, the base year, 2013, what would my value have been based on a 1970s value, okay? And m maybe I'll explain it in a different way with an example. And, and I even wrote, I thought you might be confused, I know. So here's another way to think of it. If we want to know how much A-Rod in 2010, Alex Rodriguez, would have made in Babe Ruth's time, 1930, then 2010 is the target year, and 1930 is the base year. However, if I want to go the other way, if I want to know how much Babe Ruth would have made playing today in A-Rod's time, 2010, 1930 becomes your target year, and 2010 becomes your base year. <clears throat> now, the good news is, for most of the problems we're going to be doing, it will be clear which year is the target year and which year is the base year. We'll just tell you in the problem. But it's nice to understand what they mean. The key is, once we know the value of a basket in the target year and the value of the basket in the base year, we get a number. We call it the CPI. And that number tells us how much inflation has occurred over time. So for example, um, the CPI of the... Okay, let's do an example together to try to help understand exactly what this CPI thing means. So here we go. All right, if a basket of goods uh, costs a dollar in 1980, the base year, and $3 in 2010, the target year, what is the CPI for the target year? So, well, we know that the formula for the CPI is the price of a basket in the target year divided by the price of the basket in the base year times 100. So, the price of the basket in the target year, according to our information, was $3 divided by the price of the basket in the base year, which was a dollar times 100, which equals 300. And in a sense, this kind of makes sense, right? Because we know 1980 is the base year. Now, in the base year, your CPI is always the number 100. Remember, this is a 100-point scale, so we always start at 100. If the price went from $1 to $3, and the CPI of 1980 was 100, it kind of makes sense that the CPI of um, the target year, 2010, is 300. What the CPI does is it allows us, with just a number, to see how much inflation has occurred from one, one year, 1980 let's say, to a different year, 2010. Okay, why don't we have you try a problem? Again, we're calculating the CPI. So here's your problem. If a basket was $5 in 1965, our base year, and in, in uh, $20 in 1990, our target year, what's the CPI for 1990? Stop the recording, see if you can do the calculation, and then we'll go over the answer. Okay.
So here's our answer. Again, our formula, the CPI, the consumer price index, is equal to the price of the basket in the target year divided by the price of the basket in the base year times 100. So if I do my plug and chug here, as my teacher used to call it, I put $20 in as the price of the basket in the target year divided by $5, the price of the basket in the base year, times 100, which equals a price of 400, excuse me, a CPI value of 400. And what we notice then is that inflation then has gone up from 100 to 400, or a 400 percent increase in inflation. That's how we calculate the CPI. So now we have two calculations so far. We've learned how to calculate the value of a basket, and then we've learned how to use the value of baskets to calculate this thing called the CPI. Now, okay, um, just to give you a little real world context uh, with the CPI, this is some real life data here that's been put in place um, to kind of help us understand what it looks like. Um, you'll notice up here that it says 1982 to 1984 the value is 100. That tells us, by the way, just that we're, we're sort of basing this on those years. That the, the val This is really our base years in here. But what we want to see is this. You'll notice that the cumulative value of the CPI has really gone up over the years. So what does it tell us? It tells us that something that cost 10 cents. Now, CPI, let's just say it was 10 back in 1910. And here it's t almost 200 as of 2005, let's say. What that tells us is something that cost 10 cents back in 1910 now costs almost $2 in 2005, or 20 times greater. That's what the CPI does for us. It tells us how much the, the, the real value of something, the real price of something, has changed over time. What you're also going to notice is that this red line, which is the annual CPI, the CPI as it's measured each year, um, was at one time in our life very bouncy, was all over the place. You'd see inflation really going up and down quite a bit. And over the last 30 years, it really has sort of flattened out. That's a real victory for macroeconomists that, 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 that that's occurred. We've learned how to control inflation in a lot of ways. Um, so that's just a little side thought. Speaking of side thoughts, there's one other term I want to mention before we do our last calculations, something called the GDP deflator. Now, generally speaking, this is what it is, first of all. The GDP, GDP deflator is another index that works exactly like the CPI. It's the same thing for our purposes. The only difference is that instead of using baskets of goods to measure inflation, it uses something called the gross domestic product. Now, we don't know what that is exactly yet. We're going to have a whole lesson on that coming up. But essentially, it's the total value of all the goods and services produced. So the basket, remember, was a sample of the economy and a sample that looked like the bigger economy but was only a sample, the GDP actually is the value of the entire economy. So whether you use just a sample or you use the value of the entire one, it still tells you how much prices are changing. So it doesn't really matter. The much more common one is the CPI, but occasionally they'll use the GDP deflator. What do we need to know? For our purposes, the terms are synonymous. They will work the same and a basket of goods and the GDP are also interchangeable. So if they say to you, calculate, for some reason, the problem comes up and they say, calculate the GDP deflator, you would think, okay, I'm going to do it exactly the same way I would calculate a basket of goods. I would simply take the price of the goods that were sold times the quantity and I'd find a value. All right, there's really no difference in the two terms. It's just worth mentioning that this other term exists. Um, and the only difference, again, is the GDP deflator is based on the GDP, which is all goods and services, as opposed to the CPI, which is based on baskets, which is just a sample of all the goods and services. But in both cases, they accomplish the same thing. They tell us how much prices are changing. Okay, enough on that. Um, Lastly, we're going to go back to this whole idea of real versus nominal. We Remember in our last unit, we learned the difference between real and nominal values. Nominal values are the actual dollar values of things in their current year. Real value is how much actual value, how much actual purchasing power did something have. And again, 
We've talked a lot about the idea. I used gasoline as an example in the last unit. Here's another example of it right here, this, this data compiled. The actual price of gasoline, you can see, did in fact hit its all-time high back in late 2000s. It went up to almost $4.40. But that was only in nominal values. If I look at it in terms of real values, which is this lower line here, adjusted for inflation, that's another way of saying real, by the way, the term adjusted for inflation. What you're going to notice is that the, the values really, yeah, there was a little bit of a spike in real value, but if you go back to the 1970s, it really was just as bad then, even though you can see that the nominal values weren't very high. So if somebody says to you that prices were four times greater in the late 2000s than they were in the 1970s, technically that's true. But the reality is gas wasn't that much more expensive than everything else in the late 2000s than it was compared to the 1970s. So we really want to know the real. We want to know how things compare year after year if we remove inflation from the equation. To do that, we need to convert from nominal values to real values, and here's how we do that. Real values are equal to the nominal value divided by the CPI times 100. This is why we need that CPI, because the CPI helps us get rid of the inflation. So for example, suppose a play sold $1,000 in tickets in 1997. If the CPI for 1997 was 50, and we assume that we're using, going to use 2013 as our base year, how much would this play have made in real dollars in 2013? In other words, how much would this play have made in 2013 if that exact same amount of money would, would have been spent? So in nominal dollars, we know that 2000 was really only 1000 But in 2013, it would have been worth, well, the nominal value was 1000 divided by the CPI times 100. So the nominal value was 1000 divided by the CPI for that year, which was 50 times 100. And then again, I further the equation out. 50 divided, 1,000 divided by 50 is 20 times 100, or 2,000. So what does that mean? That means if I'm in the year 2013, and I look back to 1997, and they sold only $1,000 in tickets, what it really meant was they really sold $2,000 in tickets in terms of today's dollars. And now I can take that $2,000 and compare it to a play that sold $2,000 actually in 2013 and know that those plays were just as popular. They were equally as popular. If I just looked at the nominal value, I wouldn't be able to conclude that. All right, why don't you try an example? Suppose a teacher made $20 an hour in 1990. If the CPI for 1990 was 40, again, we'll use this time 2010 as our base here, how much would they really have made in 2010. Okay, again, we'll stop stop here if you don't if you don't mind and then go ahead and calculate your problem and then re-record the video to get your get your answer. Okay. So, again, our formula the real is equal to the nominal divided by the CPI times 100. Nominal is $20 divided by the CPI for that year which was 40 times 100 which equals $50. So, what that means is that a teacher making $20 in 1990 was making the same salary as a teacher making $50 in 2010. A problem like this is important because we might ask a teacher, for example, hey, did you get a raise? Well, at face value, if, it, if we told the teacher that in 2010 you were making $40, you would say, well, yeah, I made a raise. I mean, in 1990, I was making $20, and in 2010, I was making $40. So, of course, that's a raise, right? Well, it's a raise in nominal dollars. But what should that teacher have been making just to keep up with the $20 they made in 1990? By 2010, because of inflation, it should have been $50. So what we would know is that teacher, if they only made 40 in fact, didn't get a raise. That's why understanding real values is so important. Okay, our last calculation, and I promise I know it's been a lot here, is the inflation rate. Now, this one is actually a little disconnected from the other problems. Um, the baskets, having to calculate our baskets, helped us calculate our CPI, and then having our CPI helped us calculate 
our real values when we knew nominal values. Our inflation rate uh, is a little disconnected from that, but it's still an important concept. First, what is the inflation rate? It is the percent change in inflation from one year to the next. Now, many of you have done percent change problems probably in math class or in physics class before, so it's no different than that. Here's how you calculate a percent change. Um, by the way, just quickly to highlight, it's from one year to the next. So you can only have an inflation rate that measures, let's say, from 2012 to 2013. You would never say the inflation rate from 1997 to 2013. It's always going to be from one year to the next. Okay, so how do we calculate it? The inflation rate is equal to the CPI of the year that you're trying to calculate minus the CPI of the previous year divided by the CPI of the previous year times 100%. Um, in my old math class, I learned something like this. It's your new value minus your old value divided by your old value because um, you're trying to see how much things have changed. So, for example, if the CPI in 1990 was 100 and the CPI in 1991 was 110, what's the value that I have? Well, the inflation rate is equal to the CPI of that year, 110, minus the CPI of the previous year, 100, divided by the CPI of the previous year, 100, times 100%. And if I do a little math, I find out that the final value is 10%. That's actually not surprising. Most of you can see probably that if the, going from 100 to 110 is a 10% increase. And so the inflation rate was 10% for that year. All right, I know, I know this has been a long lesson, so let's try to do wrap this up with one more calculation. You practice. Here's your question. If the CPI in 2000 was 50 and the CPI in 2001 was 60, what was the 2001 inflation rate? Okay, stop the recording here, try your problem, and then come back and check the answer. All right, remember our formula. The inflation rate for any year is the CPI of that year minus the CPI of the previous year divided by the CPI of the previous year times 100%. So in this case, we have 60 being the CPI of the current year, 2001, or at least the year you're trying to calculate minus the CPI of the previous year, which was 50, divided by the CPI of the previous year, which is 50, times 100%. And with a little math magic, we take this formula here. 10 divided by 50 times 100% is equal to 20%. And I think, again, some of you can see that a fifth, increasing from 50 to 60 is a 20% increase. Okay, that's our lesson on calculating inflation. You may need to look at it again. I know this has been a lot of math. In the end, you should have four formulas understood. How to calculate a basket of goods, how to find the CPI, how to use the CPI to convert nominal to real values, and how to find the inflation rate.